Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your October reading. So, um, it has been a while. I'm glad you guys are still around, and thank you so much for still uh, sticking around and watching my videos. I really appreciate that. Um, I feel like I have to personally apologize to you guys, mainly because I've been gone for the past um, five months. And um, I tried to do the videos for the first few signs, but I never got to you guys. And I feel like the past few months have been a little bit rough. Uh, for all of the earth signs, in particular um, Capricorns. And so I apologize for not being able to give you guys that guidance that you need to navigate the uh, energies for the past few months. And I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, it is really good to catch up with you. Um, I, I needed to take some time off mainly because I was burnt out with my main job and then trying to keep up with the videos. Um, so from now on moving forward, I'm only going to try to do uh, one set of videos per month, mainly due to time constraints, but also energetically. I just could not handle it, okay? Um, Virgos, when I was shuffling out this card, I saw a really strong, like... Um, I, I, I felt it like really, really strongly and I feel like um, many of you might have been feeling this way as well for the past few months, okay? So let me just relay what I saw. I saw a succulent like a, you know, a, a cactus, okay? Like in the fa cactus family. You know, succulents store a lot of, flower, uh, of water, of moisture within itself and it can, you know, would, withstand um, extreme weather, okay, especially dry, deserty type of climate, and it can survive without a lot of rainfall, without a lot of resources, okay, and I feel like, in a way, you guys are like the, 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 the succulent, the cactus, okay, and succulents come in different breeds, some of them don't have the thorns, some of them just, you know, come in a, a, a plant with a very um, fleshy, type of a leaf and it stores water and it maintains the the the, the water for when uh, water is scarce okay so it's a really resourceful evolutionary miracle mainly because you know in dry climatic uh, conditions these plants are able to thrive and not only are they able to thrive and survive in harsh climates uh, they're also to get uh, able to you know um, give that as well to others who might need it so like you can you know eat cactus leaves or whatever to maintain that um that to to survive pretty much okay and so for for humans and for wildlife and so what i'm seeing here is uh, i see this little cactus okay it's like you know the sogoro cactus it's like this it's got the little two arms sticking out and there's a flower on its head it's in a small pot so i feel like it's decorative it's an indoor type of a plant in this context it's sitting on an, in a tiny pot on somebody's desk facing the sun and then you kind of see a time lapse of things going by it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then before you know it, it's this giant cactus resting on a small pot, okay? So I'm already feeling it's time for a new planting season. It's time for you to either, you know, change scenery, change environment, because you have physically outgrown your environment. Like physically, you have outgrown your environment. There is no way you can stay there. And then the cactus or whoever is uh, taking care of this cactus never repotted it or gave it a bigger pot or put it out into the garden. So it stays there and then it starts to shrivel up. And then they, they see that it's shriveling up, but rather than thinking, oh no, it needs more soil, it needs more fertilizer, it needs more nutrients, the, the owner waters it, like puts a lot of water into it because it thinks it's shriveling because it needs water. And, you know, cactus don't need a lot of water, so the owner is, like, um, watering it. And then the water just never, I guess, like, it never evaporates. It never gets reconstituted into the body of the cactus. So then the cactus starts to rot, and then over time there are, like, fruit flies hovering around it. Its flower is gone, and then you see, you start to see it decay, okay? So it's a really strong visceral type of an image and I, I almost feel like there's a situation here that is festering okay and uh, let me walk you through the very beginning because like I said you know you guys are the cactus you guys are extremely extremely resourceful 
you store knowledge, you store resources for a rainy day. You know how to save up. You know how to, um, I want to say, like, uh, conserve your energy. When you do something, you time it so meticulously well that you know how much energy you need to put into it to get it done. You know how much time you need. You know how much resources that you need. You don't overshoot. You don't undershoot. You don't overestimate your capabilities. You don't underestimate the, the ease at which something can be done. So I feel like you're such a straight shooter and you have always, always been really careful and resourceful and meticulous about everything that you do. Okay, That's just like a, a typical Virgo and thing. And I feel like you are so resilient as well, okay? You have, like, your defense mechanism up, okay, in harsh, sterile environment. Like, you have your, your coat of arms. You have those, um, the, the prickliness about you so that you can protect yourself, so that you're, you're, you can ward off predators, so that you can ward off people who uh, are kind of, like, leeching onto you. And what I'm seeing lately is I feel like there's an energy of needing to put on a fresh coat of arms, okay? Needing to ward off and, and to be a little bit more standoffish. Uh, you can still be friendly, but still be standoffish. You can still be, you know, uh, cordial with somebody without them crossing your boundaries. And you guys are, are just like the, the perfect, um, you guys know how to, de like, lovingly detach, okay? And you do it really well. Earth signs do it extremely well, I feel. You guys know how to lovingly detach, especially when you're dealing with someone who has boundary issues. Immediately, you know how to separate yourself. You, you put the coat of armor on, the, the, the prickly pear starts to come out, and then the other people don't dare to get too close to you. Like It's a defense mechanism, and it has worked, and I feel like it's working really well. And um, you're in a situation where I feel like you're trying to detach yourself, you're trying to, you know, really look at a situation objectively and you might feel that there might be a lot of people around you leeching onto your energy, um, taking advantage of you. What else is new, right? T leeching onto your energy, taking advantage of you. And so you have to, you know, put on that coat with the, um, put on that prickly coat so that people don't get too close. And I feel like you're doing it with just the right people mainly because there are some takers uh, around you, okay? And so I'm also seeing the, the, so that's the first part. The other part about growth and expansion, you are in a period of tremendous growth, okay? This is like a major, major growth spurt. So like if you were physically a person, I would say, you know, you're going through your teens where you are outgrowing your environment, you're outgrowing your home, you're outgrowing your friends, you're outgrowing the physical environment that you're in and you're contemplating the next journey okay so this is the card of the Empress and this is somebody who's made it okay the Empress is somebody who takes care of her or himself they're extremely um, you know the the Empress energy I always think of it as Virgo it, it's a very dignified type of energy it's a, a very like I own this I don't need anybody else to know that I own it and it comes with a lot of power. It comes with a lot of dignity. It comes with a lot of respect. Okay, so you you command a lot of respect from other people. They look at you and they admire you. And this is a, the energy of someone who's very, very nurturing. But as you can see, the two kids, right? They're kind of behind her. She's nurturing. She's protective. She's lovingly detached. She trusts that she has taught these children well when she turns her back. She knows that they're not going to abuse the animals. She knows that she's raised them right, where they're going to be able to take care of the things in their environment and to kind of like take on her own uh, image and, and just be like her. Okay, so I feel like everything that you have touched, everything that you have tried to take care of, it has really um, grown and it has really uh, taken off on its own. Okay, some of you are meticulous mothers. You care a lot about, you know, the, the physical, emotional, spiritual well-being of your children. Some of you take tremendous care of your household, your plants, your pets, and you do a really, really good job. And I feel like it shows, and I feel like people look at you, and they're just like, you know, she's on, the Empress is on her cushions, and, you know, she looks so dignified. She she looks so, like, clean and well-kempt, and they're just looking at you like, 
how do you manage? How do you do all of this without ruffling your hair, without you know getting your dress dirty, without breaking a sweat? So they're looking at you in awe and admiration. And you know the 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 thing is, people don't people only see the end result. And I honestly believe that from your perspective, you know, you don't shy away from hard work. You know when to roll up your sleeves and get dirty, right? Um, other people shy away from hard work. And so they look at everything that you have achieved and they're just like, wow, this Virgo person does it with such ease, okay? It's not ease. It requires a lot of planning, a lot of calculation, a lot of not overshooting, a lot of not underestimating, and a lot of just, you know, being... Um, being even even minded and even handed to be able to you know pull things off the way that you do and I feel like people look at you in awe and admiration and you are aware of that too you're aware of finally your skills and your capabilities and you're while you're in this situation in this environment it feels really comfortable it feels really cushy but you are already contemplating the next big step I'm drawn to this road in um, behind this fence here there's a doorway that is open for you and there's a new path for you to take. It's an uphill path. So we know it's not going to be, you know, a walk in the park. It's not going to be a bed of roses, okay? It's it's going to require a little bit more climbing. And you are definitely up for the challenge. Some of you are in a situation where you're very, very comfortable. And so you have worked really hard to get here. You have accumulated a lot of good karma points. In order to be here and so you're thinking well maybe I can stay here for another year maybe I can stay here for another two years before I embark on this new uh, path okay some of you might have been waiting here waiting for that gate to open waiting for that new path to show itself before you make a move and now that it's showing itself I feel like it's time for you to make a move because once again you are that cactus that's outgrown the pot you're no longer uh, supposed to be here. You're supposed to be on your way, moving towards something else, and the path is going to give you a much better view, a much better vantage point. It's going to utilize all of your skills and resources, and it's going to, I almost feel like, you know, in a video game, this is like leveling up, okay? Going on to the next level, fighting the next monster, um, upgrading, learning new skills, okay? So that's what I'm sensing here. And throughout this entire journey, however you, whatever you had to do in order to get here, I feel like you did it in such a, an admirable, and this is why I absolutely love Virgos. Um, they do what's right. No matter what, it's, it's almost like they always have this internal compass and it always points them in the right direction. Like, uh, you know, like morally, ethically, it always points them in the right direction. And so what I'm seeing here is a situation where, you know, um, this is a card about generosity, giving back to people, taking care of people. You've done a lot of good deeds in your lifetime. Okay, and I feel like good deeds is not just about volunteering on the weekend. Good deeds is scattered throughout the day. Every opportunity, every waking moment that we, uh, we are awake, every moment that we are actively doing something, we can choose to do good deeds, okay? For example, driving to work, letting somebody, um, you know, uh, cut in ahead of you, because they're late for work, because we're all stuck in a traffic jam, because we're all trying to get to our destination, understanding that that person did not mean to cut us off. They're just trying to get to work and not throwing a fit and, and you know, kindly stopping your car and letting the other person cut ahead of you, okay? Uh, a good deed is like, you know, looking at the, putting your lunch in the fridge when you get to work and seeing like some uh, containers that have been spilled over or seeing, you know, some like uh, spoiled um, objects in the fridge and opting to take a few seconds to throw that out because, you know, we it's a communal fridge. We all share this space and we should try our best to keep it clean. And so I feel like you take this spirit of service to everything that you do, to your daily actions, to every single event, to every single moment of your life, okay? Doing 
the right thing okay even if it takes a few seconds of your time even if it just you know even if it re even if it requires you going out of your way as long as you feel like well I have the time so I can do this because the other person seems stressed out and so I'm doing this so that it can you know alleviate a little bit of stress in their life that's how Virgo people think and I feel like it's pretty amazing I have never encountered other signs that, you know, really step up to the plate every moment of every day the way that Virgos have. And so I feel like all of these little, you know, acts of kindness, acts of human um, obligation, I just feel like, you know, they, they have not gone unnoticed on a spiritual level they have not gone unnoticed by all the people around you and that's why they're looking at you in awe and admiration and they're just like how do things come about this to other people but you have a lot of negative self-talk holding you back and I feel like the person that you're with or the person that you know you're interested in or whoever it is that's in your midst that is a significant other uh, they're very kind they kind of um, brush away the negative self-talk they, uh, they, they build up your self-esteem. They tell you, you know, not in a way where it's mushy and, and awkward and, and, um, and, you know, like the people that love us, of course they're going to tell us nice things about us. This person doesn't do that. This person, like, um, will only tell you what they believe in, okay? So they're not going to tell you lies. So I feel like they, they give you really good constructive feedback so that you can, you know, improve. And I also feel like because they're because of their support, because of their generosity, because of the reciprocity between the two of you, you both have really built each other up when it comes to your self esteem. Okay, whatever has really shaken you, whatever has really um, chipped away at your self esteem through the process of working, growing up, dealing with family, dealing with people, dealing with, you know, people that you had to cut out of your life. If your self esteem has been corroded, this is somebody that really helps build it back up. And then likewise, you're dealing with someone who's very self made, okay? They didn't grow up with a silver um, spoon in their mouth. They didn't grow up with a trust fund. They didn't grow up with like rich parents. They build everything from their own two hands. Um, I really admire the King of Pentacles mainly because, you know, if you look at the background, there's a farmer right there, okay? He used to be that farmer. He used to have to, you know, hustle. He used to have to, you know, get his hands dirty, harvest the crop, make sure his family can, can, can eat. Uh, save up for a rainy day, nickel and dime himself, forego all the pleasures in life in order to have a lot of financial abundance. This is not somebody who was born this way. They've worked really, really hard to get where they are. So I feel like this is a situation where there is a, a very, very dignified love relationship here. It is really, it, it's, it's a really good soul connection. It is a very supportive type of a relationship. It's a situation where two people, um, I feel like, might have started from nothing and achieved everything by sheer hard work and dedication. And they admire those things about one another. Okay, so it's, it's really beautiful. It's making me a little teary-eyed. So I'm really happy to see this for you, um, Virgos. So now, there's a new gate that is opening for you. Literally a new gate. And you know... Um, I'm saying the new gate, and you know how like uh, gates that are have been really old and rusted, they make a lot of noise when you open them, right? When you move them, when the wind moves them, when somebody physically goes in there and jiggle the key in there and try to pry it open and moves it, it makes a lot of noise. I feel like there's a situation here where there's a lot of noise and clamor, and I feel like if you're looking for a sign, like tell me which way I need to go, go towards the noise, okay? It's because I feel like something is making itself very, very ed evident to you. And it's telling you, this is the one. It could be like a, a, a signal that somebody's coming in. This is the one. It could be, this is the job that's coming in. This this is the new path that you're supposed to, to take. And I feel like you might have been waiting for it to open. And, and I feel like in the month of October, it is going to be opening, like breaking open for you. Um, 
so that's what I'm sensing here, okay? Let me talk about the other cards. So as we progress with the image, okay? So this is sort of like the, the cactus getting really big and then it's got a, a flower blooming on its head. It's really cute. So it's getting bigger and bigger and the pot is too small. So you're in a situation where you have... Um, I have included a link in the description box. If you are interested in a reading, I highly recommend that you book a reading with my colleague. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. She is phenomenal. She's a psychic and um, I can't gush about her enough. And uh, a lot of my regular clients have shifted over her way and they've been really happy and pleased with her services. So that there's a link there. And I'm no longer doing private readings. Um, I don't have the time and um, just energetically I cannot physically do it, okay? So I still hope the reading is helpful for you and I will be back next month. Take care.